This little video is to answer some of the claims made by those who believe in a pre-tribulation secret rapture. After watching this video, please watch the one produced by the Voice of the Martyrs linked above. It is a real eye-opening video for those who believe the church will not go through tribulation. Now these wrath verses are those referenced by the pre-tribulation rapture folks who say we fly away prior to the coming of great tribulation. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. The wrath mentioned in these verses is not, I repeat, not the wrath of a one-man antichrist or Satan. The wrath is that of Almighty God, Jehovah God, Christ Jesus, when he returns to earth to establish his kingdom. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Christ is not coming this time to suffer for the sins of man. He is not coming to be scourged or live a humble life. He is coming to execute judgment. The wrath of God is upon all those who refuse his message and keep not the gospel. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. To execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Another passage that is used to prop up the claim of a pre-tribulation rapture is found in the Gospel of Luke. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. What is Christ talking about? This conversation took place on the Mount of Olives just prior to his crucifixion. This is known as the Olivet Discourse. Jesus told them that the temple would be thrown down and not one brick left upon another. He also told them of end time events. We know that Jesus Christ was not only God made flesh, but he was also the greatest prophet that has ever lived. Forty years after the prophecy, the great city of Jerusalem fell. This was the abomination that makes desolate spoken of in Daniel 9 verse 27 and Luke's gospel. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. For the generation that listened to Jesus and watched for these events to take place, this came as no surprise. The followers of his word fled the city as instructed and hid among the hills. The army of Titus surrounded the city, and after a long siege the city fell. The historian Josephus tells us that over one million people died in the city. They were starved and resorted to cannibalism. The city was breached, and just as Jesus had foretold, the temple was burned and completely dismantled stone by stone. They tore down the temple to get the gold that had melted into the cracks. Not one stone was left upon another. These verses are also referenced by those believing they will miss any trials, testing, or tribulation. Now I don't get this. If we read these verses carefully, they clearly teach Christ comes once. He comes with a lot of noise, and in another part of scripture it says, Every eye shall see him. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. For ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, 
that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Those that are not on Christ's side when he returns are in for a lot of trouble. The wrath is upon those who reject his message. Nowhere does the Bible tell us there is an additional seven-year period where those sinners supposedly left behind get another opportunity to accept Christ. This is completely and unequivocally unbiblical. In the days of Noah, no one was saved found outside the ark when the rains fell. In the days of Lot, no one was saved from God's wrath when the hail started to fall. So shall it be when Christ returns. Christ is coming to earth when he will rule as king for 1,000 years. This is the millennial reign found in Revelation chapter 20. Now we are not raised from the dead and called up to meet him to go back to heaven. He is coming here. We will join with him as he returns in glory. We will reign with Christ and do the work he has chosen us to do. By this time the tares are removed and destroyed and the vultures will be feeding upon their flesh. The disciples asked this very question, Where will the ones that are taken go? Two men shall be in the field, one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. If you look up in your concordance, eagles are vultures, they're flesh-eating animals. Now these verses are used to support the pre-tribulation view. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I agree with this 100%, but there is no suggestion of a pre-tribulation rapture. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. The latter rain is God's great anti-ministry. The enormous last day revival soon to come and the harvest of souls before the great and terrible day of the Lord. This is the day Christ Jesus returns. This is not referring to a period left to some antichrist. The day of the Lord will be a wonderful time for the people of God, for we will be protected. We may suffer from the ravages of man, but the Lord will keep us from his wrath. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. It is a day of the Lord's vengeance which is almost upon us, a day of wrath and fierce anger, and it will cause distress and destruction to those that are blind to the ways of the Lord because of their sin and refuse the gospel of salvation. The church will still be here as we see the day approaching. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God, and cry unto the Lord. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction for the Almighty shall it come. When Christ comes, at that very moment the sheep will be separated from the goats, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. And then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. When Christ comes at that very moment, the tares shall be separated from the wheat and be cast into the fire. Then the wheat, or the children of God, will inherit his kingdom. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn and through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Now please watch the video I linked above, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If your hopes are based on the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine, it is not based on biblical teaching. Pray you may have the strength to withstand persecution, as these saints of Christ have done. May God bless and guide your studies.